welcome to In The Mix with yours truly, Jeannie Ortega, coming to you live from the heart of New York City. I love this city. <laughs> it's my honor to be your host today on TBN Salsa. I want to take this time to say thank you to Matt and Lori Crouch, as well as Reverend Samuel Rodriguez for giving us an opportunity to boast on our God. You know, with this show, it's my heart to introduce you to people in movies, music, media, and ministry that are doing things for the kingdom of God. The Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from God. But it also says that God has given each and every one of us a gift to share with each other as good stewards of his amazing grace. So I get to introduce you to someone who is doing just that. She's a singer and actress, popular, known, uh, really known for uh, her time with Sight and Sound, which is the biggest Christian theater in America. And she's also the founder of Woman of Worth. Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome my guest, Deborah Valentin. How are you? Hi. Awesome to be here. Thank you, Jeannie. I am so happy to talk to you <laughs> about all that the Lord has done. I forgot to say that she's also Boricua. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she's a Latina, which I love. And, you know, we've done ministry together in yeah. the past. And yeah. it's just, it's always been inspiring with me, for me to see a woman of God, a Latina, you know, out there really spreading the love of Jesus, yeah. helping women to understand who they are yes. in Christ. So before we get into all the deep stuff, because you're, you're doing amazing things with your ministry, let's get a little bit of your testimony. I want to introduce the people to I'm, who you are. You know, I'm just so blessed. I'm one of those people that, you know, I don't have a really um, crazy background. I was brought up in the church. Wow. Thank God for that. Um, at five years old, I was in church with my parents one Sunday morning. I don't even know what the pastor preached, but I ran to the altar crying, weeping, at five repenting years old. of my sin at five years old, <laughs> the conviction of the Holy Spirit, amen. Wow. You know, I had a praying grandma. She was born on a farm in Puerto Rico in Bayamon. Wow. She had 13 other brothers and sisters. She moved to New York and she got saved by a street preacher. Wow. And she saved everyone in her family. She preached to everyone in her family. God can only save. And she preached to everyone in the supermarket. And when she I died, she told me two things. Deborah, love conquers all. Mm. And number two, now the mantle is on you. Wow. And now you are to preach to everyone. Married 56 years, finally, after uh, all that time, six months before Grandpa passed, Abuelito. He finally accepted the Lord. She what? was diligent. That's right. Years. That's right. You know, she was not ashamed of her Jesus. Wow. She did what she had to do. And she knew that, well, someone has to do it. Wow. So she did it. She brought those kids to church. Sometimes walking, she had to sometimes preach and teach them the Bible at home wow. because she knew that there is a heritage mm. for the children of God. And I thank God for that heritage because here I am today, all that seed that's been sown in me. I'm sowing in other women who do not know their God mm. and who do not know what their God says about them. Mm. But when you do know your God mm. and you do know his word, then you do know that you are a woman of worth. I am so grateful for your grandmother. Amen. You know, what I hear here is... Regardless, I mean, she was married for so long and her husband didn't accept Christ those six months before he died. Correct. But she diligently continued with her God Amen. and her faith and even instilled that in you. So when she said to you, now it's on you, how old were you? Oh, well, this she just died a few years ago. She was 93. Wow. So, <laughs> God bless her. Yes, amen. So I was serving God. You know, I was um, performing at Sight and Sound. Um, then after I left Sight and Sound, a Bible college asked me to come and teach there and come on staff. And after that, you know, other churches came and asked me to you know, will you be a Bible character? Will you come to our event, to our church and make your own shows? And so I did that. But really the weight of ministry, it's totally different when you're actually 
really see lives hanging in the balance. Yeah. When, you're, when you're on stage and you're ministering in a performing capacity, there may be 30 feet or it may just be like a TV wave and you're not really seeing what's happening. It's true. But when you're up close and personal with women and you know a marriage is hanging in the balance mm. here, mm. there are children here, there's, there's life or death. I mean, this woman may leave and decide to do something that's gonna change the course of her wow. destiny. Then you gotta say, hold on now. Hold on, we were in um, we were in Hong Kong, my husband and I, and uh, you know we went to before we left. We just wanted to get some souvenirs, and we were already told by our friends that were missionaries, you know, don't outright witness, don't hand out your tracks, just take it easy because <laughs> things are changing, and you know, other parts of the world we have to understand the, the dynamic Ooh. and uh, so we're bartering with this this salesperson we thought she was the owner of the shop and she said no I'm, I can't give you a discount she spoke good English but it was you know it was struggle to communicate but we did understand what she was saying which was essentially I'm a low person oh no uh, that broke my heart I said no no shut that door I know now why we came to Hong Kong. And I went through the whole thing with her about how she's a child of God. Jesus Christ left his throne to come to earth, to live a sinless life for you, for me. <laughs> Died on the cross of Calvary and paid our price. So essentially, really, we just need to receive what he already done, it's finished. Mm. And so I was able to lead her through that and her little colleague. So what I'm saying really is, is that when God plants a seed in your heart, there's something that he intends to do. It's not an accident, it's not yeah. random. Even how we met, I mean, you've blessed us. I still remember the word that you shared at Women of Worth about the man with the withered hand. Mm. It was, it's just, I can't tell you, the word resounds and it comes back and it's gonna fulfill the purpose Amen. for which it was sent. You know, as you were talking, I teared up because um, the thought, and I hope I don't burst into tears, but the thought of someone thinking that they're less than you is absolutely heartbreaking. And, um, you know, there is a dying world out there that needs to know their worth. And I'm just so grateful for what you're doing in your ministry. You know, before we get more into women of worth and just people knowing their worth, I wanna ask you about sight and sound and just the entertainment side of things because I know that there are people that are gonna watch this mm -hmm. that have that gift of entertainment, mm -hmm. but the enemy is knocking at the door and telling them, come here and use it for me. And I've been there. Yeah, yeah. You know, a big pop star. And, you know, I initially had a good idea and I wanted to help people, but then the world took me. And that is the case with so many people. And there are even Christians. Yeah. I didn't grow up in the church, so it's different. But there are Christians that have gifts and talents, but the, the world is just calling them. And they want it because they think fame or success. You are so gifted. I mean, I've seen clips of you in action doing your acting and singing, and you still chose to stay with the Lord. Talk to us about that. Yes, well, you know, I, I found it very interesting because you're right, there is a lure to use your gifts for many things and there's no condemnation if people are in the arts and they're Christians. But for me, all I can say is for myself, when I was performing, not at Sight and Sound previously, did other music theater and also did some kind of opera stuff in Europe and, mm -hmm. and so forth. And um, I would think this is so fulfilling, this is so great. However, when the curtain went down, I realized a high sea changed nobody's life. Mm. People came in empty and left empty. Mm. Lord, is there more than this? Speak, Lord, I'm listening. Well, he spoke. <laughs> he spoke to my husband. We went to Sight and Sound on our first anniversary wow. when we were first married and we enjoyed Aww. a wonderful production. And um, we were walking around being given a tour and we went backstage and there were some beautiful posters and advertising advertisements and there was one of a show that was upcoming called Ruth and he looked at me and said, you're gonna be Ruth. And I wow. said, well, they already have obviously some marketing going on, but apparently that was just the beginning stages of it. So, you know, it's interesting because God really does ordain the steps of the righteous. So mm -hmm. I was so thrilled to accept and enjoyed really 
a, such a fulfilling experience because you know that when you're ministering the word of God and mm -hmm. when you're doing what you're doing, et cetera, what happens is, is people are receiving so much more. And maybe when we get to heaven one day, we'll know what they're receiving. Mm -hmm. But for me, part of being the cast, part of being with people that profess Jesus Christ, and we're all there for the purpose of, you know, promoting his word and making his name famous. Um, so we would have these cast meetings beforehand to prepare for the shows. And, you know, they would start to ask me, would I do a little devotion for the cast? Wow. Would I, would I speak to the cast? I didn't know God was preparing me. I thought I was just <laughs> sharing with some friends. Oh, yeah. I never planned to be a preacher. I never planned to be in a stage speaking. And so one day I, I spoke on Acts and Paul when they were shipwrecked on the island of Malta mm -hmm. and he was preparing a fire because it was cold and it was dark and it was raining and he gathered the brushwood and he prepared the fire and when he stuck his hand in the fire the heat drove out a serpent mm. and the venomous snake latched onto his arm and he shook it off. And so I'm sharing this with the cast and I said, you know, if you're tired today, shake it off. And if you're, Come you on. know, <laughs> you know, if you're exhausted, shake it off. And you have w worries of the world, shake it off. Come on guys, we got to shake it off. We have a show coming. We got lives hanging in the balance. You've got to shake it off. Wow. And so I preached this whole thing and we were pumped up and then we get on and we get on set and we got our mics. Some people have mics. If you have lines or solos or songs. Some people in the cast have other duties and they're part of the multitude and they're moving the sets and pulling the donkey. And I'm acting and singing with Naomi and speaking to, you know, Boaz, etc. And here comes the guy pulling the donkey and he goes, Ruth, shake it off. And oh my and gosh. You know, saying my lines, I will go where you go, I will stay. And here comes somebody else pushing the set, Ruth shake it off. And so the wow. entire show, I had to hear my cast telling me to <laughs> shake it off. Thanks, guys. That was great. But really, it's a wonderful, fulfilling experience. I would encourage anyone to say, Lord, what do you have for me? Because we want things from an eternal perspective. Mm -hmm. And so the immediate gratification of performing secular, I'm sure, um, does have its rewards. But we know that our heavenly rewards are really absolutely what we desire and, and you know and this definitely was nothing against people in the secular world right it's more so you know just don't give in to the temptation to compromise and 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 you're a product of someone who's you know who it's a, it's beautiful to see and it's inspiring because people grow in the faith and then they they leave the faith mm. but you are a product of a praying grandma that's right. praise the lord for that yes and just really good People, the people instilling really good, you yes. know, truth into your life. Yes. So woman of worth, I've heard you talk about mm -hmm. this when we've done uh, ministry together, but tell the audience, you have this amazing, it's kind of like a slogan, I don't know what to call it, for <laughs> yeah. woman of worth. And, and let's just talk, let's really unpack that. I feel like the enemy has so much room in people's lives because they do not know their worth. Yes. I interviewed a former jihadist. Mm who told me the reason why ISIS and uh, all these people have uh, just power over young people and young men is because they give them a purpose. They tell them that e the evil things that they're plotting and the things that they're doing is a part of their purpose. Mm -hmm. And people are just looking for purpose. That's correct. So tell us about Women of Worth, introduce the ministry. Yeah, yeah, Women of Worth was not my idea. Okay, so we were in Lancaster, and it was Memorial Weekend, uh, May 2012. And in my sleep, I heard the words, women of worth, a biblical perspective to becoming women of worship, women of wisdom, and women of wealth in spite of the circumstances. Mm. That's what I heard. So I contacted my friend, I shared it with her, uh, a friend who has a Christian coffee house on Long Island, and I thought, you know, I really feel like I need to share that with women in spite of the circumstances, meaning your life does not have to be perfect for you to understand that you have worth. So she said, let's do this. I'll open the coffee house three Saturday mornings. Samantha's a little bit of heaven. Correct. Love That's her. right. Yep. <laughs> yep. And I had been there before doing some of my solo shows, you know, Night in the Nativity, Matzo Ball Soup, which played um, off Broadway and various one woman shows. And I said to her, I'm coming 
with, to you with something a little bit different. Yeah. And I wanna share these thoughts that the Lord's given me. So she said, great, what we'll do is we'll have you come on a Saturday, June, July, and August. Let's get some women here and share your heart. So we did, it, we had a great time. The first time was in June of 2012. Then the second time we met again. And after our meeting, she comes up to me and says, before we close, I've got to give you something. It's this white camper tank, Barbie tank van toy vehicle. What? <laughs> and she takes wow. a pink marker, it's a white vehicle, and she writes W-O-W, Women of Worth. And she said, I had a vision that you were driving this big white vehicle around a spinning globe. She said, that's the vision I have. So this is just kind of reminding you. And I started to cry and she started to cry and all the <laughs> women started to cry and we don't even know what we're crying. So I told her wow. that in 1999, she never knew this. Um, I started a fast. My youth pastor said, you know, you want to draw closer to God, put away your food, turn off the TV, fast and pray. So I did. I fasted. I prayed for one week, Easter week in 1999. And I said, Lord, speak to me. Mm -hmm. Speak, your servant is listening. And so nothing happened, but the last day of the fast, I had a vision. So I was awake. It wasn't a dream while I was sleeping. But as I was praying, I saw myself in a white van, wow. tank, truck, vehicle, wow. just like the one she gave me, driving around a spinning globe. I, I would get out. I would set a Christian flag on some territory. I'd get back in. I'd drive around. Out of the back of my tank was a roll-up garage door, like a FedEx truck, yeah. like a, like a automated uh, garage door and yeah. other tanks came out and other tanks oh, came out and other tanks yes. came out and these truck van, I don't even know, like a FedEx type of truck. I don't know what you call it, <laughs> all white. And the drivers were all women, different types of women, sizes, shapes, all the women we're driving these vehicles coming out of my vehicle. So when she Talk gave, about the Lord amen, confirming. I forgot about confirming. it. Confirming. After all those years, I didn't know what to do. Do I go ahead and buy a white van? Do I wait for one to pull up in the driveway? Nothing happened. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, the Lord will fulfill it. And here we are in 2012. Samantha gives me this toy truck and says, I had the vision of you driving this around the globe. And I said, ah. The vision from 1999. Wow. So it was fulfilled that day, and that's how Women of Worth was born. That is beautiful. Yeah. You know, and I've, I've profited from just sitting and, and, and hearing you speak and share at Women of Worth and, and just other amazing women all throughout New York City and I'm sure throughout the world. Um, so you have Women of Worth. You know, there's also, uh, we're talking to you men as well out yeah, there amen. too, because yeah. God has purpose and gives us all purpose. Yeah. So talk to us, you have something here and I want to talk about your husband and you know, all that too, cause I love you too, uh -huh. but you're, you're putting, you have something called uh, Deborah's daily depression detox. That's right. That's right. I don't know if they have a shot of that, but essentially that's just one of the teachings that I'm doing. Cause I want to train women. First of all, tell women that they're women of worth, mm -hmm. teach women how to become a woman of worth, and then train them to tell others. And so the cycle it's continues. Discipleship. It is discipleship, because witnessing is something that we should all be doing, but then the next step is discipleship, so they don't fall away, so that they grow, and those roots really are planted deep. Mm. So Deborah's Daily Depression Detox is something that I put together because it's not just for depression, it's not just for women, it's all kinds of you know, feelings of being downcast and uh, any kind of feeling of being um, basically not fulfilling your purpose. Yeah. So I remember a, a couple of years ago, a, num a number of years ago, I should say, I, I was feeling this heaviness, really going through a hard time, really in a pit, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I went to a women's Bible study, just women, and we were going to watch, you know, some fam famous Bible teacher give a, a video uh, lesson mm -hmm. and then we'd speak about it and the next week we'd come back and do the next one and, and I thought I'd, I'd glean a lot from that. It was on Psalms of David and David's a worshiper and I thought this will be wonderful. And I get there and they give me a name tag and they said, put your name on it. Okay, Deborah. And now, now put an adjective, p write a word that describes you that starts with your letter, with the mm. first letter of your name. And I couldn't think of anything. 
All I could think of was Deborah, depressed, defeated, wow. disappointed. Wow. Can you imagine? I wow. was a Christian bearing the name of Jesus Christ, and I was so wounded. I was defensive. I was having such a hard time, and I thought, let's just not do this. And she went around the room and said, Deborah, you, you didn't write anything. I said, I, really, I tried. I just can't think of anything to describe myself that would be positive or bring glory to God. And she said, aren't you dramatic? <laughs> oh, <laughs> ow, right? So I thought, okay, what's happening here? But now I realize that what she was trying to do, obviously, is to speak a blessing over our lives. Yeah. And being that I couldn't at that time, really um, just, just made me stop and say, Lord, you've got to intervene here. Yeah. I'm your child. And I'm, I'm so glad that he did. He lifted me out of that pit. See, when we surrender everything to God, not denial, I'm okay. I got this. No, you mm. don't. No, you don't got it. Not denial. No. Surrender. <laughs> Surrender. Yes. Exactly right. And so I'm now, I'm now, you know, I could say, you know what? I'm delightful. Come on. My husband thinks I'm darling. Oh, I love that. <laughs> That's right. And there's all kinds of things that we're allowed to say about ourselves because God says it about Determined. ourselves. Dedicated. Amen. That's right. I am. Devoted. Praise God. Come on. Yeah, and so that's part of what being a woman of worth is. It's not a self-righteousness. It's not a false boasting. But as you said, Sister Jeannie, it's a boasting in what our God has done. He can make something out of nothing. Mm. It's only by the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, going back to what I said about Paul, when he was shipwrecked on the island of Malta with 276 other people, he was a prisoner, supposed to go to Rome. But, you know, it's about two weeks and they're in a storm and they're seasick, you know, who thought this would ever end with them all alive, not one perished. Amazing. But the Bible says in Acts uh, 27 that the angel of the Lord, the angel of the God of whom I serve and whom I know, said to me, nobody's going to perish. Mm. See, Paul was able to speak a good word and say, do not lose heart because he knew the God that he served. And so the people that I run into, women of the world, not women of worth, mm. they don't even know the God they're serving. You know, I feel led to ask you to talk to somebody out there. You know, we talked about the uh, Deborah, the Deborah's daily depression detox and just you being in a pit in that depression as a Christian. Yes. There's so many people in that situation. Yeah. Life is hard. With God, without God, with God, we have the hope of glory. We have, we do have the reason to keep going. Amen. But there are people that are stuck in that depression. You know, the suicide rate yeah. is out of this world. Yeah. I was watching a documentary the other day, and just the amount of suicides that happen today yeah. is staggering. No, it's heartbreaking. And it because it, it starts with depression. Mm -hmm. And it starts with isolation and that little world that, you know, we tend to try to go to. I know there's people out there, people that are probably not even Christian, mm -hmm. people that are Christian that are going to watch and they're going to see this. Mm -hmm. Can you speak life and, and just help them? Because as someone who understands, you've been there. Yeah, yeah, I've been there. And I say to you right now that your feelings are temporary. Your feelings are temporary and they will pass. You see, on the outside, we have something temporary. Our situation is temporary. Our temple, our vessel, our jar of clay is temporary. But the treasure on the inside, as the second chapter of 2 Timothy says, the treasure on the inside is eternal. And therefore, what I'm going to say to you is you need to speak of eternal things, not speak of your present feeling, your present situation, your present circumstances, because what we want is f to have an eternity with Christ. And so that starts with saying, Lord Jesus, come and be Savior. Come and be Lord of my life. My plan may not have worked out. Things may not be the way I thought they would be, but the past is over. There is no condemnation if you're in Jesus Christ, Romans says. And so now you 
have authority as a child of God, as a daughter or as a son to say, no, depression, you must go. You actually have to speak it out loud. And that's one of the things that I enter, uh, I've entered into the Deborah's Daily Depression Detox. I've written that in there because some people think it in their mind, but there is power in the spoken word. God spoke the world into existence. He looked over the face of the earth and there was a void. There was darkness. If there's a void or darkness in your life, you got to speak it. It's voice activated. You have to say depression, go in the name of Jesus. Amen. Anxiety, go in the name of Jesus. You say it out loud and it falls off of you. I promise you this thing. God's word has power. His life has power. And when you are in agreement with God, meaning you're repeating what he says and you are doing what he says, you're applying it to your life. You're going to see a change, but it's got to start with you. Some people think somebody's going to come and rescue me. Jesus already did. Amen. He did on the cross of Calvary. He doesn't need to do anything else because his work is finished. And now you have to say, no, no, I don't belong in this pit of depression. I don't belong in this, this den of, of defeat. I am not going to die here. I shall not die but live and proclaim the good things that God has done. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You can feel the fire from my <laughs> sis, huh? <laughs> I'm so grateful for your ministry, for women of worth. You know, people out there, get involved, get plugged in. You can look up women of worth. Deborah has resources. Connect with this ministry because you should know that you are a woman. You are a man of great worth. You are, you were worth dying for. Amen by our Lord, you know, and um, you're married to a councilman and you guys together are just so dynamic. And, you know, I'm just loving everything that you're doing. And I pray that the Lord will continue yeah. to just broaden your reach and, and, and the life, the word of life that you have in your mouth, that it will very well, you know, get into other people if they would yeah. have the same courage yes, to you. step out in faith. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Remember, you are a person of great worth. Until next time, see you later. Make me wanna... Make me wanna...